everyone. Today we're going to talk about rational function. So we will begin this section by looking at another economic concept in addition to total cost and marginal cost. Another matrix of a cost is average cost. So the average cost of producing Q numbers of item with the total cost C of Q is in the function of the average cost going to equal to the total cost divided by the number of items. So here's an example. Okay, here's the example. Suppose that manufacturing an item has a fixed cost of 4,000 US dollar and the per item cost of 20 per item. Find the average cost per item when 215 items are produced. So the first step is we want to know what is the total cost. So the total cost should be the fixed cost plus the variable cost, which is how many items that you produce and then times the per item cost, which is 20 times 250. That would be our total cost. And divided by the number of items, which is 250. This is going to be our average cost. So when we simplify it, we will have the average cost equals to 360. But now, if I change the number a little bit, instead of I know that I'm producing 250 items, now I'm going to change this to a note number of items, such as if I'm producing X numbers of items, what will be the average cost? How would you do that? So that means our total cost, instead of 4,000 plus 20 times 250, we will have 4,000 plus 20 times x. That will be the total cost. So, and then we divide it by the number of the items. We're producing x amount, so we divide it by x. So this is going to be our average cost in general. So now I want to take a look at a this decimal and what does this function look like? So here we're going to introduce what is a rational function. A rational function is like what I just showed in here which a function can be written as a ratio of two polynomial ps over qs. Then we call it a rational function. So to get a feel of this rational function, we will take a look at the graph of a rational function. So a function like fx equals to 2x plus 4 over x minus 3. If you look at the top, it's a polynomial, the bottom, also a polynomial with a degree equals to 1. And then let's take a look with our decimal. So y equals to 2x plus 4 over x minus 3. As you can see, this is a rational function. If you notice that as s gets close and close to a certain number, right, the function's value is getting larger and larger in the negative direction or the positive direction. In here, right, it So that means if you see a 9 when x equal to 3, when x equal to 3, the function is getting like what? Getting really close to 3, but never touch 
x equals to 3, this straight line. Let me type in x equals to 3. If you see here, no matter how close we're getting, the graph is not going to touch x equals to 3. The green line is x equals to 3. So these we call it is vertical asymptotes. So now look at the horizontal asymptotes. So if I type in x equals to 2, y equals to 2, I'm sorry, you will see this purple line. The graph is not intercept with the purple line. It's getting really close. So if we zoom in, as far as we get, you will notice that, hey, this line never have interception. They're just getting really, really close. So for the purple line, we call this is a horizontal asymptote. <laughs> so in definition, let me close this. In definition, a vertical asymptote of a graph is a vertical line x equals to a where the graph tends towards a positive or negative infinity as its approach to a. What's that mean? So now look at this graph. I'm having this graph. Um, let me draw a nicer one. So if I have a graph look like this way. And this is going to be my asymptote. So for a vertical asymptote, is a vertical line x equals to a where the graph tends towards a positive or negative infinity. as the input approach A. So let's say this asymptote is at the point A. So if you take a look at the graph, when the graph approaching to x equals to A, what happened to the graph? Either goes up or goes down. When the graph goes up, that means they go into the positive infinity. If it goes down, that means it's going towards the negative infinity. So this x equals to a, this line, is called asymptote, vertical asymptote. So for horizontal asymptote is a similar idea. It's a line, let's say this one, y equals to, for a horizontal, Asymptote is a horizontal line y equals to b when the graph approaches the nice as the input gets larger. So as you can see, when the line approaching to y equals to b in here, the line goes to what? Goes to the left or goes to the right, right? Both go to the left or the right means the input, which is x, is going to negative infinity or positive infinity. So if you can... If you're confused about the definition of a asymptote, that's okay. But as long as when you're in the graph, you identify. That means when the line trying to approach it, it goes to the infinity. So this is the asymptote. Okay, so we also have a vertical intercept or horizontal intercept. 
So if you look at here, this is our vertical intercept, and this is our horizontal intercept. So let's try to find the vertical asymptote and the <coughs> and the intercepts. Okay. So giving you a function. I want you to find the vertical asymptote of the function k of x equals to 5 plus 2x squared over 2 minus x minus x squared. So to find the vertical asymptote, remember the definition of vertical asymptote, we determine that the function is undefined by setting the denominator equals to zero. So that means the denominator, when the denominator equals to zero, we will find our asymptotes. So let's solve it. We will have 2 plus x over 1 minus x by AC method factoring. So we solve it where x equals to negative 2 or x equals 1. So these indicated two vertical asymptotes. So we can check it by using our G-algebra. So I have y equals to 5 plus 2x squared, right? And then divide it by 2 minus x minus x squared. So look at this graph. As you can see, if I draw a line about the asymptote, x equals to negative 2, the red line, you can see the graph. When the graph approaching to x equals to negative 2, the graph goes to infinity. So this is the asymptote. And now the other asymptote is when x equals to 1, which is the blue line of oh, sorry, 1. So also the graph is really approaching to it, but never really touch it. So let me give you another example. If I given you a function kx equals to x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. How do you find the vertical asymptote? So the vertical asymptote is we want to set the denominator equals to 0. Is x squared minus 4 equals to 0. So when we solve it, we have x equals to 4 x squared equals to 4, so I have to take square root on both sides, I have x equals to 2, or x equals to negative 2. That means we are going to have two asymptotes. So now, let's check our answer and see what does this look like. We have y equals to x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. So if you take a look, our two vertical asymptotes, okay, the black one, definitely asymptote, because when the graph approaching to the graph one, the black one, it goes up, also or goes down. That means they're approaching infinity. But what about the purple one? It seems like the purple one doesn't affect anything to the graph. So what causes that? That is because the numerator of this function is equal to zero when x equals to zero. So when x equals to zero, the numerator of the function
is also equals to zero. Because of this, the function will still undefined at two, since zero equals to zero is undefined. But the graph will not have a vertical asymptote at x equals to zero. So what's that called? What does that mean? That means the graph of this function will have a vertical asymptote at x equals to negative 2 here. But at x equals to 2, the graph will have a hole, a single hole where the graph is not defined, indicated that it's an open circle. So actually, the graph is going to look like this. There's a asymptote when x equals to zero, I mean, when x equals to negative two, and then the graph is going to look like this one. But when it comes to x equals to two, there will be an empty circle. That means the graph is not going to define at that point. This is called hope. Okay, <clears throat> so a hole may occur in the graph of the rational function if an input calls both numerator and denominator to be zero. In this case, factor the numerator and denominator and simplify it. If the simplified expression will have a zero in the numerator at the, the original input, the original function has a vertical asymptote at the input. Otherwise, it is a hole. So, in summary, a hole might occur in the graph if an input calls both numerator and denominator to be zero. So in our case, in this specific example, in this case, when x, no, when x equals to two, the numerator equals to zero, also the denominator equals to zero. So that means this is going to be a whole at x equals to 2. Okay, the next one is a horizontal asymptote. So when it comes to horizontal asymptote, we need to discuss case by case. So remember what is the degree of a polynomial. So a degree of the polynomial is the highest power that occurs in the polynomial, such as if I give me a function fx equals to x to the 2 minus 5x to the 4th plus 7x to the 5th minus 2. So the degree of this polynomial is what? Is 5, right? Because the highest power in this function is 5. So the degree of this function is equal to 5. So when it comes to horizontal asymptote, we need to discuss case by case. Case one, if the degree of the denominator greater than the degree of numerator, such as fx, equals to 3x plus 2 over x squared plus 4x minus 5. So the numerator, the degree of numerator equals to what? 
the degree of a numerator equals to one, right? And the degree of denominator equals to two because that's the highest power. And here would be one. So if it's in this case a horizontal asymptote, would be y equals to zero. This is the first case. So the second case is if the degree of denominator is less than the degree of numerator. For example, I have h of x equals to 3x squared plus 2 over x minus 5. So the degree of the numerator equals to 2, right? That's the highest power. And the degree of the denominator is what? It's 1. So that means the degree of numerator is greater greater than the degree of denominator. So in this case, there is no asymptote. No horizontal asymptote. Okay, the last case. The degree of denominator equals to the degree of the numerator so the asymptote is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficient such as fx equals to 3x squared plus 2 over x squared plus 4x minus 5 so in here we have the numerator degree is equal to 2 and then the degree of the denominator also equals to 2 they equal that means the horizontal asymptote y equals to the ratio of the leading coefficient remember what's the leading coefficient is the coefficient about the highest term. In this case would be this one, that's the leading coefficient, and the leading coefficient here, which is one, right? So we're three over one. So that means the horizontal asymptote is y equals to three. Okay, so this is discussed by three cases. So, okay, now let me give you a function. Let's find the horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote. So if I give you a function, fx equals to x minus 2, x plus 3, over x minus 2, uh, minus 1, x plus 2, and then x minus 5. So let's find vertical asymptote first. So for vertical asymptote, we want to set the numerator. No, we want to set the denominator equals to zero. So that means this part equals to zero. It's going to be our vertical asymptote. So I have x minus one times s plus two over x minus five equals to zero. So I have x equals to one or x equals to negative two or x equals to five. So here we're going to have three vertical asymptotes. <clears throat> okay, so for horizontal asymptotes, we need to look into the degree of these two polynomials. So the degree of the numerator equals to what? So I have x minus 2 times s plus 3. So the degree of the numerator equals to 2. And then the degree 
of denominator equals to there is totally 3x so it's equal to 3 so that means the degree of a numerator is less than the degree of no the degree of a numerator is less than the degree of denominator right so that would be which case well that is equivalent to the degree of a denominator greater than the degree of a numerator so our horizontal asymptote equals to zero so y equals to zero so that's our answer okay so now let's use it use that for some application problem so here's an example, Navy product, products an eBay retailer that resells items purchased from Fiji has started selling a new to market product. Nadi is currently selling 2000 units a month, which has been growing by 100 units a month. The total market for the product is currently 10,000 units, but is going by 1000 units a month. Determine the Nadi's current market share. B. Find the horizontal asymptote and interpret it is context of the scenario. Okay, so now let's take a look. So what's the sales of Nadi's? So how do we find out what is current share? So we need to know the sales. The sales per month from Nadi, right? So the sales per month from Nadi is, they totally currently, it has what? 2000 per unit, but each month it grows linearly, which is 100 unit each month. So that means the total sale is going to be 2000 plus 100 times X. And then the market, so currently, the total market for this product is what 10,000 units. But the market is growing by 1,000 units per month. So that means this ratio will show the market share of Nadis. So that would be the market share. It's a function of X. S is the month. Okay, so now how do we find the horizontal asymptote? So the horizontal asymptote is, we need to determine case by case. So now let's take a look. What is the degree of the numerator? So the degree of a numerator is equal to one, right? Because that's the highest power of X is one. And then the degree of denominator also equals to one. So, oh. so that means the horizontal asymptote is equals to y equals to what? The ratio of the leading coefficient, which is here. It's going to be 100 over 1000. This is going to be our horizontal asymptote. When we simplify, we will have 1 over 10. So what does that mean? So remember, what does this function represent? The function represents the market share of Nadis, right? So now let's take a look at the graph and see what does this look like. Let me move the graph a little bit in here. So from the graph we have y equals to the market, the current market of Nadis over the current market of this product
it's going to look like this. So we have our horizontal asymptote line equals to 0.1. So look, we don't need to look at the negative number because the cells, the month has to be a positive in reality. So if we keep looking, the graph is approaching to 0.1, right? Which is 1 over 10. That means what? Y would present it the market share. So that means now this market share will be approaching to 10% in the future. So that's it for this section. We were just discussing about vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote. I'll see you next time.